At that time, the shepherds said one to another, let us go over to Bethlehem and let us see this word that has come to pass, which the Lord hath showed us. Words taken from St. Luke's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, had established a period of peace. It's what the historians call the Pax Romana, a world peace brought on by various military conquests. In his eagerness to know the number of his subjects, the extent of his vast empire, Caesar Augustus ordered a general census be taken. Caesar gave this order out of human pride, but the good Lord would nonetheless work out his wondrous plans, even through the hubris of an emperor. While Caesar thought only of gratifying his ambition and pride, he is, in spite of himself, preparing the way of the Lord and the proof of our Lord's divine mission. By his very command of a census, Caesar Augustus would be an instrument in literally fulfilling divine prophecy. Now, at the same time that all these decisions are being made in Rome, Our Lady was present in that little backwards rural town of Nazareth. The days of her delivery are near at hand, and yet she did not leave the town of Nazareth through her own choice and her own self-direction. In other words, the Virgin Mary was well aware that the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior in her very womb, was to be born in Bethlehem. She knew that, for all the prophets had made it very clear that he would be born in that city. But yet she waits. She waits on the Lord to act. The Virgin remained in Nazareth, with good St. Joseph, awaiting the wonders of divine providence and the predestined plan of God to be played out. All the prophecies concerning the Christ, all the predictions concerning the Messiah, would have to be fulfilled exactly. The divine unborn child, soon to be born, must be a member of the royal family of King David. It was essential that the holy name of the child somehow be recorded in a book so the documents would show in an authentic and very official legal manner the very date and place of his birth, that the whole world might be aware of the perfect accomplishment of messianic prophecy. Again, everything is arranged perfectly by the hand of God. Obedient to the command, the edict of Caesar, Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem to be registered. Whether the pride of Caesar Augustus or the obedience of the Virgin Mary, the divine will is always accomplished. Our dearest Lord would be born in the city of David. It would be literally put in a book, registered. And before the fall of the Roman Empire and the barbarians burning all the records, it literally could be looked up. He would come in his first advent to Bethlehem. Now, for the last four weeks, we've been asking the good Lord to come. Come, Lord Jesus, we've been saying. Come, do not delay, do not tarry, come quickly. At the beginning of the holy season of Advent, we focused more on our Lord's second coming. How we should long for his second advent, the apocalypse, the full unveiling of the wondrous plans of God. We should long for the parousia, when the Lord will make all things right, where fire will burn away the old heavens and the old earth and bring forth the new heavens and a new earth. But as we passed into that second part of Advent, we considered the first coming of Christ as a divine and saving infant. By remembering and recounting the nativity of Christ, we make it present in our lives. We join with the Jews of old. We're in union with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Isaiah and so many others as we beg him to come mystically, liturgically, through the mystery of the mystical birth of Christ within us. 
that he would come to save us from all our sins, that he would deliver us from Satan's power and tyranny and any and all demonic influence in our lives. And that is why for the days preceding Advent, we, we prayed those O antiphons. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We were asking him and begging him and pleading him to come. Come, O wisdom from on high. Come, O key of David. Come, O radiant dawn. Come, O king of the nations. But having called upon our Lord to come to us, and having seen him arrive on Christmas, the focus now changes. We who called upon the Lord to come quickly are now told by our Lord to come to him. We're not calling on him to come so much anymore. He is asking for us to come to him. Venite adoremus. O come, let us adore him. Come to the manger. Come near to Mary and Joseph and worship the Son of God and Son of Mary. Come with the shepherds and the kings and fall prostrate before the word become flesh. Our Lord is now pleading with us. Come, come to him. Come to him, all you who labor and find life burdensome. Come and follow him, for he knows the way because he is the way the only way to true supernatural happiness. The infant king is now holding court because it's Christmas Day. He's receiving visitors, and he will not turn any of us away. So come to Bethlehem. Do not delay. Do not tarry. Come quickly, for angels are calling not just shepherds, but are calling us to come to the stable now. And when we do come to him, Know that he is infinitely approachable. He is immeasurably kind. He is friendly. He is amiable and he's affable. And one of the reasons he became a little child is that no one would be afraid of him. Children never engender fear or terror. No one would run and hide from a little baby. Babies are in no way threatening. The Christ child would not glare at us in anger, though he might stare at us with great interest. For he has full use of his human reason, though he has just come forth from the virgin's womb, leaving her womb virginally intact. Being a divine infant, our Lord chose to be born as one unable to speak. The very word of God is silent outside of a few cries longing for his mother's milk. But in this wondrous silent infancy, the little Lord will not utter any words of condemnation against us. He will not bring up in conversations with us all our past infidelities. He will not list and recount all our past offenses. His infancy also means that he will not strike us, though we deserve to be struck. His little arms and little feet will not be used as weapons against us, because he's just a baby. And this is the time to come to him, for you will never hear the words, Depart from me, you accursed, into the everlasting flames, prepared for the devil and for his angels. And so come to Bethlehem. Come to the stable, come to the major, because our Lord has arrived. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.